I mean, we asked for update date numbers for the street signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Is he on the? Yeah. Is it, I can read my back. Are we? Hey, Brian. Mm -hmm. Is it right there? Come on in. I just, I got to say, you guys grilled me, and that was such an easy interview. Y'all got, y'all ran me <laughs> over the coals. I mean, well, we well, knew who well, we were dealing with. Well, we like him. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you like him. I think it's updated. No, this is done. Yeah, it's not on the agenda. Yeah, look, look right here. It's not on the agenda. Look. <coughs> Thank you. Look. It's been a long okay. day, guys. Sorry. Brian, we got here the two items the Street Sounds item. Santa Magic Service Agreement, kind of as a refresher because we let it sit for too long. So first, um, I think the easier of the two is the Santa Magic Service Agreement, unless you have Street Sounds in front of you. I got, got both. Okay, so Santa Magic, we know the the, grant, the bottom line is zero dollars, but just explain real quick what Santa Magic would do, uh, kind of synopsis of what we got in front of us. Well, we have the continual issue. Um, or we have had, and it, it was brought to light, I, I think, a good bit uh, last year. Uh, Laura's not in here, but I know she brought it up in terms of the decorations and how that's, uh, we're falling behind our sister cities in the, in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, our objective would be just to help put together a strategy, bring together the meaningful parts of our community that are integral to that, such as the chambers, such as Parks and Rec, Beautification Council, um, you guys, the Arts Council. Anyway, bring all those major factors together, have a conversation, let's establish what our goals for the city are. Um, the pr our primary focus would be just on aesthetics. We're not in event planning, that's, okay. that's not. That was a big question, or no, wondering. That's not what, no, this is just about just you decorating and just helping to bring focus on our decoration. Okay, that's it. Yes, uh, that part's not going to cost the city anything. Uh, well, there's a, a, a that all depends. That's up to you guys. You know, we'll pull this group together and establish what the plan is, what everybody would like to see, and then come back and present to you guys. Um, there's a lot of different options. If you want to take the time to get into those now, I mean, there's purchase options, there's lease options as far as decorations. But the bottom line was, I think in the contract, it would be, we would, the city would split the cost with Santa Magic up to 5,000, is that correct? Uh, you would reimburse five, uh, up to 5,000 to Santa Magic for mm -hmm. out-of-pocket expenses, should we incur any, if you decide to cancel it. So it's not the, a split. The, the agreement. Okay, so say we decide on doing something and we need $3,000 worth of decorations and you go buy them, we reimburse you $3,000. Is that is yeah, but that wouldn't happen until we have approval for you from you guys yeah. to yeah to okay. to do, to spend that money. Okay. So, and and again, we could say go ahead and then have a committee and say, well, we, we don't need any other decorations. We just need to do with the best of what we got, and then y'all do. And that may be the case this year. Yeah. You know, we'll see what everybody you know what everybody's desires are. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example why it's important to us. Uh, I think there was a small group that made an effort to do something at the corner uh, right there by Robert Sprayberry last year. Mm -hmm. You know, it was cute and quaint, but here's the thing that people don't about that don't understand. So they don't know, okay, you've got to anchor your trees down. Mm -hmm. You've got to, be, you know, pick certain decorations that the wind's not necessarily going to move from right there out into the middle of, of, of Broadway. Those are things that, you know, we're aware of that others aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, that's a minor thing with those trees. Uh, I mean, it was cute when it was first set up, but didn't take long it was very first. windy and they were on the, they were on their sides and laying on, you know, laying down a lot more than they were standing. Well, in my mind, it's not going to hurt, sorry Tiff, in, in my mind, it's not going to hurt to do this, have the committee come together and meet and decide on something. And if we don't want to purchase anything, we're not out of pocket anymore. Doing Let me ask you something. So even if we were to purchase something, like that stuff will be stored. Like we bought it and we can use it next year too, right? Yeah. That's so that's what I'm that I'm, I'm trying to think big. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, if you want to buy a, like a, a really nice um, uh, outdoor artificial Christmas tree, you know, they're not cheap. They're you know, a nice one's thirty grand. Show, show me a picture of what you have in, in your head, because I know you. I know you have pictures. <coughs> Don't you do something, Chelsea, Brian? 
I, I do, but I hadn't done any renderings because I, I wouldn't until we got past this point. It would be a waste of energy. Uh, but yeah, I do. Do you have any of those pictures? Uh, any that, cause I know Julesburg waits till after Christmas and then they go, the city gives that committee a small amount amount and that's all they have to work with and they wait after Christmas and then go buy the decorations because you know everything's uh -huh. half off or fifty percent off of Christmas decorations after Christmas. But if we decide the first year it wouldn't be like that. So it wouldn't be all blown out. So is it year. is it kind of like the thing that's um at the traffic light in front of the map code? Is that something like you're talking about in Chillersburg? I just uh, need a visual. Uh, the, actually the the one that they put right there uh, behind the uh, museum uh, is their official city uh, Christmas tree. If you've ever seen it, I think it's a uh, 20 footer. Well, can it be something other than a Christmas tree? I guess that's what I'm asking. You know, sure. I think it's a sleigh. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, right now, that's something the that the, a group of the community citizens built. Okay. That's what that's I was part of that if it was like something yeah. like that. And, 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 and that's that community made. You know, we could bring on clubs and stuff and say, okay, would somebody want to build a, a giant sleigh? Mm -hmm. And they may undertake that and build it. <coughs> one, one more thing. So if, if we were to do this, like, would you be responsible for, um, I guess, scheduling things in front of this, whatever we're going to build or do? Like, would we, like, I don't know, maybe. No, that's, I put that on Parks and Rec and the chamber. But They've that, already got a thing, lot You know what I'm saying? Like, say if we, we agree to this and we, we decide to, we decide a spot we're going to do this at and this is where we're going to do the setup so would that be an option for people to come and maybe take pictures and is that is, am i going in the right do you understand what yeah, i'm saying we've had that the past yeah. couple of years we've decorated we've central park central park we decorate that we so, leave it so up what's going to be so what's, until christmas so what's going to be different from what he wants to do than what we've been doing at central park he's just saying he wants to organize yeah. Oh. We just and, and, and enhance what we've got. And going what he's on saying there. is actually a good idea because you have all these little individuals who want to do individual things. We could bring all those people together and do big things. Okay. Just make well, it well, that makes sense. Just bring I think a together. good example is what the city of Opelika has done. Um, Which is where I've learned a lot. But see, but I, I hadn't seen it. And we can give you pictures. Yeah. Of but that. you know, yeah. I'm, I can I'm get a visual. You. I just need to yeah, see. Yeah, me too. Me yeah, too. I just need to yeah. see. That's a good example of permanent type decorations. It's not, you didn't give us your old Christmas tree type decorations. It's professionally done. Like one of theirs I love is they have this gi these giant ornaments that mm -hmm. sit in the square yeah. and, and of like it. And they have these beautiful reindeer that are, um, uh, have lights all over them that they're reusable, they are professional decorations and they're used year after year. I got another question, maybe two. So if we were to do something like that, of course, we would purchase that so the city would own that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then next year, um, would the committee be responsible for setting that stuff up or mm -hmm. would we have to bring somebody in and pay them to set it up again? Well, our- I know I'm asking <coughs> crazy stuff. Ultimately, ultimately for us, here's the, well, that's the Childersburg setup. Yeah. And, th and then the reason I asked what I asked, so okay, they got that. So Chillsburg gonna set that up every year. We get our thing, we're gonna set it up every year. So every year it may not even be $5,000 because just say we wanted, we just needed we're to replace, stuff. yeah, we needed to replace one of the H's. That's, you, I'm just trying to- Or, or just add can, something small. Or you, you know, you can choose where we're gonna lease and you can you get a lot and, more and, and then it. that company oh, okay. that you lease Not from it, but you, yeah you just keep getting the somebody same else stuff. owns the decorations and you lease from that company you don't store it you don't worry about it breaking you, you don't put it up it. you i don't know about all that but that's part of the committee coming in and figuring that out well i, see, I still need to know so i can that that know, was my question y'all you know. figure whatever out as a committee it still runs through the council correct we do we we still approve mm -hmm. and all that Absolutely. As far, you know, there say, here's our plan. We, we, we say yes or no. We certainly could not create any expense and then just mm -hmm. assume that you're going to reimburse. It has to come back. Got one more question. To you. On the lease, can you change it every year or do we do the same thing every year? Or do you know? You can do whatever you want to do. You can add, you can take away if there's stuff you didn't like. You know, there's, there's any number of things. But yeah. long term, I can tell you your most viable solution is. Is, is, is purchasing because you do reach a point that, and the biggest thing is you get what you 
I know you get it, but I still, you know, I just, I'm just in my head. You, you got, so you, you just have to invest in quality stuff that's going to be there, that's going to be, uh, continue to be relevant. There's stuff that. Well, it's making more sense to me now because now that means I'm looking at it like even if you buy something, it's not going to be $5,000 every year. Right? No, no. In fact, if you decide, you know, if you decide that you want to buy a, um, a 30 foot artificial Christmas tree, well, you're looking at about 30 grand. But then that tree will last you 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. But you're making the, the downtown area an attraction where people come out, they're walking about, and that's what we want. One more question. This committee, because you said we reimburse up to $5,000. So anything over $5,000, the committee pays for? Or are you just not going to spend over $5,000 a year? We'd stay in our budget unless we reach the... Uh, well, if you're putting it like that, I think leasing would be the best option because you don't want to go, obviously go over $5,000 until, why you know, maybe the first year I would definitely lease. Or, I'm just saying. What I would say is probably what you can expect to happen is our little group will get together uh, and then decide, okay, here, here, what's the vision? How do we create that? What's it going to cost to create that vision? And then we'll present that to you and you decide. Then Who's going to put the to group go. together, Brian? That's what Sound Magic contract into do. Yeah, but the only reason I ask because I don't, we don't want to get everybody excited and then we don't know what we're getting into. So we commit, we created this committee and then you come and we're like, no. No, we'll start out. It, we'll do something, make a small, I think the group will come together and say, okay, this is what we want to do. This is the first year. This is where we want to be. Well, and also take the people that have individually done it over the years and put it together and make it flow. Exactly. Yeah. So. Would you at least include somebody from the beautification? Oh, council? yeah, there. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem. We need to, of course, formally adopt, uh, approve the contract. Um, so I, it's, it's not on there. We can put it on the next agenda and approve that. Um, <clears throat> street sounds. All right, I, pre I prepared a, a one pager on, on street sounds if you guys needed a refresher. Um, Are these numbers up to date? Uh, yes, they've been, they've been updated. Um, uh, total project uh, cost has increased by a couple thousand, a little over 2,000. Um, end result means we're looking at a, a High end estimated city contribution of, of uh, 12 to 20, and the CDA will match that and then plus take care of the annual cost. Okay. And uh, I asked Laura to be here uh, today um, because she's also been in, in, in contact with some other cities, uh, such as uh, Gaston and Oxford. Uh, and I'd love for her to explain what they yeah, have to say I, to you. I deal with Gaston a lot too. Remember, I called you and yeah. when I went through Gaston because I was in, in downtown inspecting some stuff and I was like, man, this, it wasn't even, <coughs> no, it was Christmas time, but they had just the subtle, low music. It's not like you can carry on a conversation while you're walking down the road. Yeah, it's, and it's not stuff. overwhelming, but mm -hmm. the, one of the biggest values it'll be for our downtown area is also muffled sound. Mm -hmm. It helps bring down the street noise. Yeah, and and that's great for our outdoor seating environments that we have. But Laura, what did the merchants and other cities say? Um, to you? Well, this was from Athens, Alabama, um, and uh, speakers were mounted on all four sides of their courthouse. They have a square, um, but still, uh, they also added a really neat feature. They did lighting around the courthouse that the lighting can change according to season, <clears throat> which is not what this is, but. Our community loves the sound system. We play 60s music during our cruise ends, um, Christmas music after Thanksgiving, love songs at Valentine's. If we have a big trial going on, we can dial the music back or turn it off. The merchants love having the music. They say it adds to the atmosphere of strolling around and shopping. Um, and that, uh, and then Gadsden, um, she said, uh, let's see. It's brought a positive, it's brought positive comments for, from everyone. The most common comments are that it offers a great ambiance as they walk down the street. At times, we even notice people dancing along with the music. It has been the best addition that we've ever made to downtown Gadsden. Um, it's, we, they control it from their office. 
um, this is their, their Main Street Community team. Kay, who sent me this, is the Main Street director. They, we control it from our office, um, so we know what's playing. We use um, mood music, um, and uh, she just talked about how positive um, the whole program was for their downtown community, merchants and residents. Question, who would control, if this was to happen, who would control our music? CDA. CDA. What kind of music you like? Well, they, they, it's it's a cloud control, and so it would be um, a shopper friendly, upbeat top music that's uh, it, it would be moderate. It, it's a, so a you, ain't play, you ain't no, Will and Jennings no. and Merle Haggard's probably out. Uh, yeah, I'm a no. It's just gonna it's just gonna it's, gonna, it's just gonna be feel good music that's just gonna put make people happy and put them in the mood to shop. Well, we're gonna take go ahead. But also, um, I have a couple questions. I'm sorry, Asher. But also, y'all said that even like the, if there was a football game going on, you could broadcast the ball game through it. Is no, I that, lied. Not a lie. Who said that? I said I lied. You lied. It's tell them about it. Yeah, the only way we got idea. idea. The only way we can we could do that would be if we had a commercial free uh, uh, broadcast that was taking place that that could be played. But I don't uh, know that that would be necessary because we have. You know, we have local coverage that could be broadcast we do. in restaurants yeah. if we needed to. So yeah, we, that, that's that. Um, you got TV forty seven. I, I got, radio I got one. More, I got two more questions. So if that's possible, would it be basketball too or just football? Yeah. Basketball. I don't think we need to base think... this on the foundation of sports. I really don't. This is creating but, an atmosphere for shopping. It's not. We have local radio stations that provide that. But we yeah. have local radio stations that provide music too. They do, but this puts the music outdoors at, mm. um, you know, I just don't think that that's the whole premise of Street Sounds. If it's something that's added, I think that's great, but I don't think the decision needs to be made on whether it's promoting sports in the community. Now if you had a lot of saying, But I'm saying, but we do live in a, a sports community. We do, that's I mean, and we, community we have does, children so. and it's easier to, to go along with things when everybody's getting something that's that's how i look at it but i guess since you put it that way i guess well I'm and like, you know say basketball's in a playoff or something and you got a local coverage that wants but I mean, to air to it, me, it can it can way, happen the way i look at it if we pay for this it's going to be with taxpayers money and it's going to be everybody's going to want to get something and it may be something if they're downtown shopping it would be nice to hear whatever i mean i don't even watch football so. well most of our retailers are not open that seven at night when a football game starts um there might be two or three or when any of our sports i didn't think about that you know they're yeah. not open then so people aren't shopping um, now, when sports events are taking place if you had uh, like like during christmas a couple of times last year we had uh, a piano player out there somebody playing a keyboard and, and do it okay you could take that and live stream it in uh, so that they, they could be heard mm -hmm. all the way up and down uh, that block, that whole area. Yeah. Well, and, and we'll take this, and the main thing is we have to look at the 12,000 too and see yeah. where it can come from first. So, obviously, that's got to be the key. Can so. I just add one other thing? Uh -huh. I think making this commitment to mm -hmm. your downtown businesses, whether they be service, retail, mm -hmm. restaurant, I think showing that you're committed to contributing to their the improvement of their shopping environment is going to carry a lot of weight. These people have invested large amounts of money in our community. And the ones I've talked to are on board with Well, they've but all every, signed. But everybody yeah. has invested money, and that's why I was asking about the game, because yeah. the way you're still this Most of our small just for businesses, the, this is their personal. The this is their personal. They're not just paying taxes to live here. They've invested their entire lives in this community, and that carries a lot of weight. And I think we really need to think about supporting them and showing them that we care about improving the environment for their business in the downtown district. I understand. I think we need to. And the shoppers. Yeah, yeah. and the shoppers exactly. too. I mean, but and you think about. So that means that's everybody. Yeah, it does. Not just yeah, the, the shoppers owners. are getting a benefit yeah. from the young people. And that's, and that's why I was looking, yeah. that's why I was thinking the way I was thinking. It's a win-win it's a for both sides of the. Um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You pretty so, much think, uh, you know, two months out of a year, out of, out of, out of, out of the year, you're going to be playing Christmas music. You know, just 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 about the entire. Let time. us take this and the updated numbers and mull it over and see where 
it could come from potentially, and we'd have we'd have if we do anything, it'd be on the next agenda. Okay. So now that we have this up to date. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. All right. Thank y'all for all See your time. See you, Ryan. Uh, yes, but real quick, we had a discussion on the FML. MLA extension for a street department employee. Yeah. They've got doctor's notice, checked all the boxes, so there's no issues there, right? No. And that right. note, that email is in there, so obviously we would extend that discussion. I mean, not discussion. Is that we've already started the music? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Michael, I just, go ahead. Okay. And you've got what he's mentioning in your packet too. Yeah. I'll stand back here if y'all want me to go over there and stand up. <coughs> so, there has been another change on the drainage project. The first one we brought to y'all in East Clay and South Church. Um, they got through with that and moved over to the next location, which was uh, First Street and Calhoun. And they got through with that area, got it open back up, went to the third one, which is West Walnut and North. And Two, three things have happened. One, the sanitary sewer was marked down the middle of the road and it turned out being not in the middle of the road in the curb line. And where we wasn't crossing it uh, with, one of the, with one of the pipes coming in, there was no conflict, but when it was in the curb line, then it became a conflict. Um, so basically, at Talking Utility Board, they stubbed out coming out of a manhole for a future expansion project, but they didn't run that expansion all the way and the rest of it they teed off and it's in a curb line. So that's one, two, uh, the second part of that was at some point along West Walnut, all that drainage flows from 21 to the culvert by the hospital. There was a 24 inch old clay abandoned in the curb line and converted over to a 24 inch trunk in the center line of the road. The 24 inch trunk uh, had no access point except there was one access point at 21 and there was one, I don't think there was one until you got almost to the bridge where it stubs into the side of the coal. Anyways, long story there, there was no way to verify an invert in that run. We, we took the clay pipe invert on the side, assumed we could get flow to the middle, we could not, and then it interfered with sanitary sewer also. So those two things, and then the third thing at that site, there was an inlet um, along West Walnut that we were replacing, right where a current inlet is. Well, there's a steel gas line that runs into the back wall of that inlet. And so it was a smaller inlet box, it could not be modified, uh, could not be moved. We asked the gas company, can it be moved over? They said if it was plastic, they could move it, but since it's steel, that main cannot be moved. And so we've got to basically retrofit that box to get around the gas line. Um, so it's two utilities, and then there was basically an abandoned, there was an abandoned storm line that we didn't know about until we opened up. We found two different junctions that we didn't know were there when we got the road. And it doesn't, I mean, I'm just repeating what's on here, it doesn't extend the project at all? Any additional? No additional calendar days yeah. for it. They've been shut down for almost a week on it, but no additional Good. Well, Michael, I'll say this from the improvements that we've already done. Mm -hmm. uh, what me and you talked last last two weeks, we've had a lot of heavy rain, and downtown we didn't have any trouble that we've been having. So I think we're going in the right direction. It's been a pleasure to work with you yeah. and your company, and we thank you for what you've done so far. I hate coming back. I know. It, I you mean, can't I really have. Do. I don't. But um, yeah, that one just. And this totals twenty one, correct? Yeah, so they submitted it kind of in two different packages, and I had not presented either one of them to the council. So I just combined them together and said, here's their two backup documents. I'm going to give this to y'all to look at in one package. Yeah. Um, and so these funds come out of the American Rescue. So yeah. should be covered there. Okay. Anybody have any questions you. about it? Appreciate you, Mike. Thank you very much for keeping us up to date. Okay. Thank y'all. Uh-huh. All right, only now we have uh, EDT coming in to discuss about the TAP grants. Um, this, can you see them, Steve? Are they six down there? Brandy in there. While I'm waiting on them, uh, Mayor Heigl is reading into the minutes his appointment of Tara, Tara Douglas, to the Planning Commission. We have reading into the minutes, uh, appointing 
uh, Taylor Farr is the acting municipal judge, effective July 7th, uh, June 17th. And then we appoint either him or somebody else officially as counsel, but he's appointed the uh, immediate temporary judge in there. Okay. Action is necessary to recommend from HR, extension on the FMLA, we just went over the zoning adjustment hire for uh, add-on for uh, Jason Clary and the change order approval. That's it. So. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Did they go downstairs? I don't know where they are. Oh, wait, go ahead. We're here. They're, they're coming. Um, back to the Christmas thing before they get in here. Our current Christmas tree that we like is. What happened? Huh? Somebody put a Christmas tree in the middle of an event park. It's like in the worst location ever. Is this Lord? No. Is that her idea? Neither one of us were involved in that decision. I hope he's enjoying Lake Martin. <laughs> so. All right, Miss Brandy, y'all come on in, introduce yourselves and everybody, and we'll get started. I'm going to sit in one of these folding chairs. Yeah, you can sit right there at the head of the table if you need to. Well, I was going to look here and he's coming back. Okay. You got to run the restroom. So I'm Brandy Robertson. I'm with Engineering Design Technologies. And the project, one of the project managers on this project. Okay. I'm Zach Robertson with Engineering Design Technologies, and I'm <coughs> engineer Brick. No relation. <laughs> All right. And we got Mr. Harry. We yeah. dealt dealt with Harry the whole time. I'm the engineer Brick. He's also the senior I'm vice president. Not sure about Sylvie's, but that yeah. person is no longer with us. And what, Brandy, what I'm going to do is kind of, uh, you know, we, we received your email to answer to our questions and mm -hmm. stuff, and we want to, we know where we're at currently, I guess you'd say, but we need yeah. to talk about closing out, because obviously we can't go after the other grant, the 23-24 grant, without this 18-19 closing. <coughs> so we need to focus around closing this, is what the, the plan is for today. Okay. And then I'll kind of repeat what you told me, Brandy, to everybody else, that, you know, they can't start any plans for this new TAP grant because this 18-19 isn't closed out, so they wouldn't get paid or reimbursed or anything for starting any new plans. So initially, you have to submit by the deadline 100% plans, is that correct, or partial? Well, we have to have them ready to um, advertise for bid, have them submitted to ALDOT, and then ALDOT submits yeah. over to Montgomery and FHWA. So as it stands, they wouldn't, the current deadline, probably be able to make, but with the relationship, they said they could pro possibly get an extension to make if we close this out soon enough. That's correct. So that 23 is not, 24 is not gone. It's still, it's still out there. That is correct. <clears throat> There's Harry. How you doing? You got the head of the table. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brandy, I guess you're orchestrating. You can go ahead and you got anything to touch on that's different from your answers on the email. You can go ahead. Or... I don't. I don't okay. have anything any different. The biggest thing that we are, of course, I have Zach here because he's my superior. Mm. Um, and he is the senior vice president. So we're just wanting to really hear feedback and see what we need to do to help address any concerns that the city has and what we can do to get this project closed out. Because right now, you guys, you know, we are we did write the letter um, for the overruns for ALDOT to take funding, extra funding left over currently on other TAP projects and um, potentially put that towards your overages so that would save the city money. Mm -hmm. So that's sitting out there. So we kind of... You know, whatever we can do to get this closed out, okay. Ken well, and them are pushing for that. The you know some of the stuff like the trees and shrubs and things like that. Um, you know, are we is that a proven that it was in there? Like the beads, or forgive my ignorance on the terminology. The water beads. Yeah, mm -hmm. was that in there mm -hmm. in the contract and actually put in place? Yes, and they actually come with the plants and. 
Keith and Steve both acknowledged that they already had those beads in there when they're in transportation. So and they and left those, those in there. Does that L dot people? No, that is actually the the Triple contractor. J. Mm -hmm. Triple J. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, we did acknowledge that there were some shrubs and trees that um, had some fungi and they did go out and replace that and part of the responses that I sent back were, were the invoices where they did they paid for those and came back out and replaced those so when they replaced or I mean it was seen that the, the water deeds were were in there mm -hmm. why did they die yeah was there any reasoning was the fungi the reason they died or what was that the ones that previously did there was some that had fungi and those are the ones that we replaced Um, and any thing? other death was due to the lack of watering. Yes, and we have we have that. They were never added to the watering to the watering schedule, and that was part of the. There was a copy of the email that I put in responses because I had touched base with Kim on that because you guys have a watering contract. Oh, with Sims. And you didn't at the time when y'all planted. I'm assuming well, that's before my time. Yeah, Sims came on did. right before we cleared in the business. Contract, so, contract took care of all the water before that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, and you said you need a clarification on number three. Are you, do you have your email? Uh, I'm number three. trying to get my email pulled up, but I can, I can look it's up a, actually fast. Gray appears to need attention on North Broadway. East side, fifth and sixth street, water backing up the buildings closest to the road. Yes. Was this great confirmed? Yeah, that was just we needed clarification on where they were talking about where that water was backing up so that we would know we can look at that because there were areas that we that we addressed and there were areas that we didn't touch. Well that did somebody uh, a representative of EDT reach out to clarify? Because again, I mean of course we're not day to day I'm just trying to get down to no, because this came from Wynn, so therefore I responded directly back to the city attorney. I'm following the protocol that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. But you so, walked after a council meeting with Ronnie Salloway. Yes. Right. Yeah, I, so I did that, that after June, yeah. and that that area was actually corrected. The area that we looked at right there behind um, Papa John's, over in that area, that area, the contractor Ed Perry came out and fixed that area, so that one was addressed. This was supposedly an additional one that I've not heard of until. So you hadn't made it down to Magnolia's yet. You no. didn't know that area. No, had... because after that council meeting, night, no one had reached out to me with any additional comments. So this was the first. What when Wynn sent this? This was the first contact I've had regarding any other issues. Because I thought came, we were close. None of this came up in a punch list. No. Did, during the pre uh, pre planning, there was no asphalt. Uh, you know the council everybody said that they didn't want to put down any asphalt during this contract well to correct some of those areas where the water you'd have to put new put your new asphalt in to, to run that water to your drainage areas so it, at no time was it y'all didn't want to put asphalt down then and then i think reed said that he was going to pay the alleys when he gets some money yeah but there's some of the water that some of the water issues is right there in the alley too. Right. So, which is pretty all pretty along before we even got here, uh, pre-construction, we mentioned in some meetings that they did that y'all didn't want to do the asphalt, and that would have helped with all the drainage on it. And those are areas that are beyond the scope of beyond uh, absolutely. Right. So one, uh, no, the next one, then I'm just trying to move through as many as I can. The, sure. um. Building owners, West Side. This is where Silicaga Glass is. Where door shut curb. Correct. Where Silicaga Glass is down here. Mm -hmm. um, they set the curb height and the roadway height is making it where people get out of their cars. The curb height, the doors are hitting the curbs. Curb height didn't change. As a matter of fact, we lowered it a little bit to meet the uh, ADA requirements. So the curb height didn't change as far as people hitting their doors or whatever opening their doors. Or well, why? And again, I'm playing devil's advocate because I'm trying to just go through all this. Why would it not have done it before and then done it now after the project? Don't well, I asked the landlord. Uh, I mean, the glass, the lady's glass. To, she was parked there that day. And I asked her to come open her door, and her door never did hit the hit the curb. Okay. You said it was lowered to meet uh, what, what requirement? It was lowered to meet your two percent 
to meet and your Normally our curves are designed the standards, the state standard curve. So I'm not sure. The slope of the road, too, had a little bit to do with that, too. I mean, did, we did y'all not pay for that sun and that everywhere. crown in the road? Not as state highway, so we didn't. Yeah, there, that's what well, I mean. Well, we the road have, stayed like it was. We didn't, we have we didn't do anything curve to the road. We designed for, and that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what LDOT's going to. If we didn't deviate from that standard, the curve won't get paid for, so we have to abide by that standard. So if there was, um, you know. Well, there's elevations on the plans, too. On the actual plan set, there's there's existing elevations there, and there is proposed elevations, and all of these went through review processes through the ALDOT standards. So, the city had time to have input on that also, as long as it went through all the proper ALDOT channels for design review. Okay. Um, so, really, the the slope of the roadway there plays into effect. I know. I mean, I, we can all see how sloped it is, but I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, Next was corner of Fifth Street and Broadway, tire puncture hazard, jagged edge of three. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And we that was corrected already. Harry, <coughs> that. Recently? No, we need to. Uh, we that's, need that's the all the weight. We weld the. They need a piece of aluminum angle iron, or not aluminum, a piece of metal angle iron welded on the end of that where it would be okay. jagged. So that's the one. But I was going to wait till we before we started okay. doing something just. You know, before we, we need to wait last meeting. So uh, what all we still, need to do. Still there? That needs it, to be it is still there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's aware and, and being handled. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think. Uh, the grates are installed on Broadway, 200 block west side behind Sherwin Williams here. They're collapsing, and I think concrete or uh, concrete crack around the grates as well. That's the one you went out there on. That's the one I can see. Uh, from what I'm seeing, that the grates and all are, are not collapsing. And we actually have pictures to show yeah, that. Yeah, I've got them it, attached. They're not, yeah. You know, there might be some cracks in there. I'm not going to say they're not because there's a bunch of 18 wheelers that have to come through there. But that's, that's just could, the cracks. You know. That's all that is. But shouldn't that or not. concrete be a certain thickness? Because everybody knows that that's a loading zone anyway. So it shouldn't crack even though those 18 wheelers are coming through. Am I right or wrong on that? Or is that just, I mean. You know. You don't have cracks everywhere. Right. I've got you got them all over your sidewalks out there. People riding up on the side of your sidewalks. But that ain't but a year old, Mister <coughs> Harry. Yeah, but if they ride up on your sidewalk and stuff, I mean, you talking about the eighteen wheelers and stuff? I'm delivering. Mm -hmm. We need to, yeah. This, I this think needs to be addressed. If that, that's cracked, it needs to be addressed. Yeah, well, chief had already discussed the. That's why I added the pictures in there well, so we can address it. Because we yeah. have, that's why I added the pictures. I mean, the existing, the, the trench itself is not collapsing. The concrete, the concrete. is cracking. And that, so is that, that, ain't that what we discussed? Yeah, yeah it's, the, we, it's the concrete. It's we didn't pour right. that concrete in there. Right. I think that was existing. That had already been poured before we even got there. We didn't do anything to those grades. So you didn't pull the grade up, y'all didn't touch the We grade. did the apron to it, but we didn't do the, uh, the grade itself. So. Did we do anything around the grade? There is a scrap. Did, if I we if cracked, we did the yeah. area that's cracked, I'm then it needs to be plans. it needs to be fixed. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the plans right now to look at it, but we'll we'll look at that and see what needs to be done. Okay. Anytime you have a corner like that, you you're gonna have some cracks. That and usually that happens on a lot of grapes and stuff. But uh, we'll look. We're, we're gonna well, look you, at you that. You can still look at that. Might have to add some extra rebar and pour it. On the so what my what, what my plan is just to give you guys a heads up is come here and talk to you guys the questions that we could get resolved let's get resolved like this we'll go back yeah. we'll look at the plans and we'll respond back to everybody so everybody's on the same page of what's going to happen and what we'll do yeah. if y'all are good with that right because I'm having for some reason my computer is just yeah we got spinning. two of them taken care of so far you right know, we're on six so on right. seven that water's to hold in the parking lot um, Hunter Block on Broadway. Where is this? Um, 200 Block was addressed, but not 100 Block. Right. That's because we just found out about that one. Oh, there was that's only, what we just talked about that. Right. Okay. Yeah, that was the only one that we knew about. And I think the issue is going back to paving these parking lots. We're going to have to have some way. Well, can we do the same thing we did to fix 100 to, to, to 200? Yeah, but I mean. Same problem. 
Yes, it is the same problem, but it, until you get ready to pave all of it, all of it could be an issue. Well, they're talking about just you in got, other areas that's holding. Yeah, we're not talking about that. We so, know we've got a big issue in both in all of our alleyways, yeah. but in those parking spots, where they used to didn't hold water. Now they do hold well, water. Well, it has the curve. And it the same thing on Calhoun it's behind the permits. Yeah. It's the same it has, situation. It has yes, the, the curve. It has a curve, and what we need to do is we need, we the, need the same thing and just well, do the trick. Well, if I go in and do it like, I'm, like I did the well, last we'll talk about one, we'll, we'll talk about uh, then the... I gotta have something to tie, or they gotta have something to tie to later when they well, paved it, or it's you gonna create the same problem again. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, we're gonna go back and look at the plan, and we're the gonna same. see what our proposed plan is, it's and then we'll also get so the plan. So it's just gonna, when I go in and pave, when I I'm doing that, then, then you pave over, it's yeah, gonna push the water back. I'm not paving over or anything, mm -hmm. we're gonna correct it. Okay. That's it. That'll be their issue to deal with when they pave over. All uh -huh. right. Okay. Um, the benches, some of them are mounted too close. If you pull up on the curb you're going to hit the bench before you hit the curb um that's stuff that we can move we did lay those benches out unbolted for the city's approval before we actually bolted those down but that's something that we need to do please yeah we can move those okay and a lot of those i know what you're i don't talking think about it's all trucks. of them no it's it's where it's where they jog behind out. the coffee shop and then yeah. down that down and, that and it's primarily the larger that vehicles they can be flagged like with orange flagging or something yeah, we tie a ribbon on the yeah. arm or something. And the snow which one. Yeah, because sure. what it is is it's the bigger trucks, the the SUVs and stuff that actually go over. Or if you've got a rush guard on the front, the front. Right. rush guard and yeah. grills and all these yeah. other vehicles. I'm getting yeah. green. You can mark them up some tape or ribbon. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. No sleeves are ever installed per plans at the handicapped parking spaces to put the handicapped signs. Yeah, and we said we'll do that because that was missed on everybody's Check. part. Yeah. I need the city to come out there and mark that. If you'll mark those where you want to put them at, then uh, we'll go ahead and drill with you. Okay. Um, the blue, the blue park places are already, you know. Okay, hey, you just want them in the middle, right? You just right. want them in the, yeah. Yeah, just in the center of it. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll, we'll I don't want any cars sure. hitting those either. We'll, you know. we'll mark them. We can do that. Okay. Um, but once we mark them where we suggest they go, we'll put a dot there. If you, We'll give you a heads up. We're going to put them there. We prefer you go out there if you hadn't gone out there in a day or two, and maybe signs there. That's so, fine. Well, we're not. No, we're not responsible for the signs. No, but yeah. if we yeah. mark them yeah. and we get the contract, they'll be drilled. Right. Yeah. They'll be drilled. We're going to. And it is what it is. Yeah. Yes. I'm just letting y'all know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll send an email. Them. Yeah, we'll send an email to everybody. Okay. Some of the brick pavers on the sidewalk on Broadway between Fifth and Sixth Street need to be regrouted. They're uprooted, coming loose. So I think you did respond. We just need to identify those areas yeah. to inspect and fix. Yeah. I think it's going to be very similar to what we had on the on the previous house okay. project. Um, 11s, no, out of our hands with AT&T. Yeah. Um, 12, too high. We just talked about the curb height on that. And that's it. And the rest of it just has pictures just as documentation. Right. Emails that y'all needed just from the documentation I okay. have. So we've got to five, six, seven, eight, and nine will be addressed and, and fixed. And after that's done, we'll be able to close out if I'm reading this, if I'm interpreting this correctly. Um, like I said, we'll go back and we'll review, we'll review that curb and I'll give you what the elevations were and what the, what the actual build, the as built curb that is. Okay. So that you guys actually have that documentation. Okay. And then we'll send responses back and let y'all know the game plan because we'll go ahead and walk so out there. So timing wise and then what constitutes closure for the purposes of all that? So the, Good question. The only thing that ALDOT needs is just you guys have to do a resolution saying we're accepting this project for maintenance. That's it. That's all we need. That's literally all we need. Just all, yeah, all it, all it is is closing that out. We've already, all the estimates are, are I mean, they've been up to date. Yo has been turning those in, get reimbursed. It's strictly just the close out process of just saying, Silicaga understands we're taking this over for maintenance. We're done with this, and then we, you know, we can start on the twenty twenty three. Because so it, time, so timetable a week. Well, days. we need to walk this tonight, and while we're all three here, we're going to go walk these sites and look at the drainage concerns. Because if it's if that drainage concern is like what I walk in the Papa John's, it's just a small area that's puddling, just like what that was, and it's just a matter of doing a trench or doing something. 
and then you guys, you know, whenever they can they'll quit calling me every time it rains because <laughs> it'll be fixed. <laughs> but I need people to contact me, guys. This is the biggest thing is I haven't heard anything since last June. If y'all have issues, mm -hmm. I like talking to win. I don't mind talking to win, but I prefer someone would contact me directly, either by email, by phone, by something. Can I? Can okay. I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Would get back to the water, the water. Um, help me. Water. Water beads. Water beads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you send some specs to that so we can look at that where they were implanted at? Well, yeah. they're just part of the package. Like when when he went and picked up the pots nursery. of the and the, from the nursery, they're in there because that's what the nurseries use. Right. But so there are no life, specs of no, okay. and they're not. It's not a. It's not a long term. It's not a long-term plan. I was That's, just thinking with this whole big project, there were specs for, mm -mm, you know, every no. little detail. We no, need to find out no, why Semtec didn't get that added to their maintenance schedule. Reed said they didn't. Control. They didn't. Uh, it wasn't in their contract when we hired them. No, it wasn't because that contract was released prior to it bidding because that's when we were working on the other on the other stuff that we we're working on yeah this but didn't we add design. something like a hundred dollars per did, or something did, did that's for the added, 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 added. That was no for the that was after that was for baskets the things y'all got now no yeah, it was something before that, that. So high up. it was something before that but but in Ray, don't remember that guys but in the, in the in the response that i did i put the email from kim where i asked hey has this been added to the watering schedule and she said no that had not been added to the watering schedule so those are things i mean it just it really needs to happen and you know unfortunately the rain that came that y'all got y'all got hit twice with pretty bad flooding that never helps and i will say this contractor went above and beyond their scope of work because after y'all had the first flood they came back and relayed the pine straw they were a much better contractor to work with to actually get this project completed and they did a great job compared to what the 2015 type project what's was. the what's the timeline you guys may think just off the top of your head of getting all of our errors correct. Well, she said after she walked it, can you just give us an update in the morning? Can you send an email out with them, uh, a time frame in the morning after you walk it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to get with contractors. Yeah, we got to get so with the contractor. The issue we're, we're going to run into is we're coming up on a, a holiday. Yes, and sir. A lot of contractors sure. have a. We know it would be sometime yeah. after the 4th. So it would be after the 4th. So it, it, I would I hope <coughs> we can have sometime in July. That'd be, that'd be great. July, August, would, yeah. just, you know. July would be great because sooner then we close out and start on the right. 20th. Yeah, and, and we're the same way. We want to close out. Sure. Quickly. So yeah. is 18 and 19 not closed because all this isn't right. completed? Yeah, is Nobody signed off saying right. it's good to go. It's done. Yeah, it's okay. We need a maintenance. Yeah, y'all have to have a resolution yes, saying that y'all have that. That y'all will take over maintenance. Yeah. And That's, I will say i'm going to have zach zach's copied on the emails anyway he's normally copied on my emails but i will be completely out of the country from july 5th until the 27th of july, july. 5th is a good day yes I sir will be yes. Out of the, i will be out of the country for three weeks so zach it will be your point of contact during the month of july i like that just, give you, just okay. give you a heads up good. thank you guys all right i think we'll no more in the morning just shoot us email <coughs> that's my problem thank you all Thanks right there. thank you thank y'all all right, guys, I went over the rest of the email, the rest of the uh, stuff on the agenda tonight. Very short meeting, so we'll stand adjourned and meet downstairs. <laughs>